All right, everybody. Glad to be back here behind the nine. Uh, glad to be back at the track. Glad to be uh, interviewing, podcasting, webcasting with my good buddy and front tire changer, Nick O'Dell. Uh, yeah, Nick, how you doing, buddy? Uh, doing real good. It's uh, good to be back going again. It is. It is. So front tire changer, you've been a front tire changer for a long time. You've been with the nine now for fifth year, just the fifth year, I think. Uh, 2015 was when I started with Jeff. And then yeah. so Jeff's last year was my first year or the second half of Jeff's last year was my first year. So yes. I've been with Chase ever since he came aboard. You've been extremely successful front tire changer for a long time. Like you said, 18 years. I can remember, I think the first memories I have of, of knowing you was probably when you were on the at Everham's right on the front of I was that. on the front of of Casey's car uh, was was Kyle Turner on the back I was trying to remember oh yeah oh yeah that was I, I did a year on Casey's car and then my my second season uh this this kid named Kyle Turner came aboard and uh <laughs> yeah. you know one of my best friends we've been through humongous ups and huge downs but uh, you know, we were actually just texting today and uh, we're going to go have lunch tomorrow. So, I mean, he's, That's great. he's still, he, still with me, still in the thick of it. He's a great guy. He's got a great family. I love his dad. He's a cool person, but yeah, Kyle, I was just thinking that, that the first time I, I met you was when you were on that car. And, and then I remember you and Kyle and it's kind of funny. It kind of comes full circle. Both of you ultimately worked with me and changed tires for, for cars that I've crew chief, which is, which is fun. Uh, and you've won, you've won a lot of races. You've done a lot of uh of uh accomplished a lot in the sport a very successful tire changer so so the, what stands out to you like any any specific instances any thoughts like man i'm not going to make it i'm going over the roof of this <laughs> car i'm like uh, what, what stands out what, 18 years is a long time to be changing tires what stands out to you over that career man 18 years there's not there's not enough recording to to go through it all but uh some of some of the cool things is you know that that feeling when when you feel like you finally made it. So I got called up to go change front tires for Casey Kane, um, and honestly, I, I was doing development work for Everham Motorsports, uh, pitting races for Bill Elliott, you know, which is kind of cool that that came full circle. Uh, I got called up to the primary car at the time, which was Casey, and I'm from Illinois, Illinois native and everything. And they said, hey, we're going to go to Chicago, and you're changing tires. And this was like five days before the race. So I'm kind of like looking around and everything. And, and I'm a nervous personal nervous person as it is. And they told me that. And I was like, uh, I, I couldn't talk. I couldn't, couldn't walk. I was like, Oh my gosh, I've, I've been wanting to, to hear those words, to get that moment, to get my chance my entire life. But it was like, okay, we're just going to send you back home. We're going to send you in front of your home crowd. Right. Your mom yeah. and dad are going to stands. Uh, Pressure. Good luck. Don't, don't screw this up. <laughs> Yeah. So we, we get to Chicago and, and at that time, I think I had just, I had just started changing tires, you know, just picked up a gun for the first time that January and this was Chicago. So I believe it was early July. So I'd only been doing it for six months and we go to Chicago and the race is going okay. Then we start performing a little bit better. Pit stops are going good. And before I know it, we're winning the race. Like we're leading, like who, I'm I'm in I'm in the position that I it, you know I'm getting chills right now just thinking of it, and Tony Stewart was running second on a restart, oh, and Lord, race. yeah, a lot of people remember that race. That yeah. was my first first full time gig Cup race, and we ended up uh, going to the wall in turn one on a restart. So Tommy Baldwin, our crew chief, jumps down and says, "Boys, here we go!" And yep. everyone starts following Tommy. I I'm I'm so new that I'm like, we're going, where are we going? Like, what's going on? Like, we got to go work on the car, don't we? Like, what's, I don't understand it. So I'm just kind of following the guys. And before I knew it, before I even realized what was happening, guys were getting thrown to the ground. There was a, no, there were no punches thrown or anything like that, but it was a mosh pit of people. And that to me was like, welcome to NASCAR. You know, it welcome was to NASCAR. That's, that it threw, when I say it threw me into the deep end, it threw me to the deep end with the center block around my ankles. You know, yes, for sure. I had, to, I had to fight for it, and it was literally a fight. So, you know, to me, that that stuck out as the pivotal moment of my career. I very well remember that race. Remember that uh, 
those circumstances. Now you bring it back up. And uh, I learned a long time ago. I've had a, I've had a running philosophy: is 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 there's one person that you don't mess with in the Cup Series garage, and that's Tommy Baldwin because he. Uh, oh yeah. He, yeah, he's not the guy. He's not <laughs> the guy. He's not the guy to uh, to to get on your bad side. So, yeah. So, tell me about the one. You know, the the, the one thing that the the Watkins Glen. We've got the video. That that was a pretty sensational moment in, in our in our first win with Chase at Watkins Glen, and and ultimately, you know, we'd been trying. So I mean, you were a part of this, right? We'd been so close to winning races, trying so hard, kind of seemed like we couldn't get out of our own way when we we we, we were we were in position to win some of these races. And that day, um, it all was it all was kind of coming together, and then. We put you over the hood of the car. Let's take you to that final pit stop in Sunday's race in Watkins Glen for eventual winner Chase Elliott. That's front tire changer Nick O'Dell who gets clipped. He was okay. Good news, the service put Chase out front, and it's that track position that led to his first career victory. Uh, what was your thought? You know, I mean, I remember the first thing I was thinking is like, man, you held the gun in your hand, and ultimately, is this removing equipment from the pit stall? Is this a penalty? So, go. So, t tell me what runs through your mind through this experience. Uh, when it happened, it was like I, on two tire stops. I think I've been hit probably three or four times in my career. So, fortunately for me, I, it wasn't new. Um, and when I say hit, it's a, a gentle push out of the way by a you know thirty four hundred pound race car. Um, yeah, Jeff but concrete concrete's hard no matter how hard you hit it um, yeah. so when i stood up and i realized that the jacket dropped and the car's leaving you, you you're not going to outrun the car so your only chance is to just jump so i i jumped uh and tried to gracefully you know execute getting over the front of the car because ultimately we're we're judged by humans uh by by the nascar officials and if you can play it off and make it look all right, you know, just have some fun with it. Uh, they're, they're, they're humans too. You know what I mean? Sure. Nothing I did in that stop was illegal or wrong or outside of the rules because per the rules, the tire changer, the, the, the people can leave the pit box and equipment can leave the pit box as long as it's in our hands, similar to a two tire stop. So when I spun around after I got hit by the car and landed and I still had the gun in my hands and I'm sitting there on my butt on pit road, I looked up and there's an official looking right at me. So the first thing I did is I looked at him and I was like, Safe. Safe. <laughs> I was like, there's nothing I, I know. I've been doing this long enough. There's nothing I did there that was legal. And it was, was a good stop. So, you know, it was like, I mean, I don't want to, we've had this string of second place finishes. I, I was fighting for every inch that I could to, to make sure that that official laughed it off rather than, you know, looked at it with some scrutiny. Uh, so so you know, thinking it, it still is a judgment call. Thinking back through that, was that the last year that we pitted the car backwards at Watkins Glen? Yes. I, I believe we made a rule because of that. Yeah, I was that yeah. I was thinking, yeah, <laughs> I, I just thought of that. Yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah, that was fun. That was cool. That was a a, a pivotal part of that race, which was a, was a great race for all of us and a lot of fun. So, you know, something people might not know about you too is you are um a race car driver. So <laughs> your, your, your hobby is driving race cars and, you know, it's something that I thought was cool. You, you got to kind of, uh, I, I would assume it's a lifelong goal or, 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 you know, certainly checking off your bucket list, uh, going to the chili bowl and you get one at the chili was bowl. Incredible. So I, I don't even, I, it, it started way, way, way back, um, with my grandfather who was building engines out of his house shop uh, when my dad turned 16 he wanted to build a race car wanted to go race at the the local saturday night dirt track uh, my grandma said no you did that for five years until he turned 21 once my dad finally turned 21 she you know pretty much said you're an adult you make your own choices grandpa built him a engine he stuck it in a 57 chevy and out on the dirt track he went uh, a few years later my my dad and my uncles are nine years apart so when my uncles became of age they started racing and then my youngest uncle he started racing 
Well, as as life would have it, I'm my father's third son. I'm I'm the baby of the family. So when I was born, he had to basically choose between being a father of three or you know going Saturday night dirt track racing. So it, it's really weird the way it came full circle. Like he he did he did the right thing. I mean, he had to take care of his family. So we were you know not very well off, um, but the means that we had to. We, we did awesome with what we had. I wouldn't change my childhood for anything. And it made me the person I am today. Uh, I grew up wanting to race race cars more than anybody I've ever met in my life. Uh, you know, I, I grew up five minutes away from Justin Allgaier. I grew up side by side with him. Uh, Justin is an awesome kid. Can't take anything away from him. He is exceptional person. Um, I say kid, an adult. <laughs> At the yeah, time we were kids. Yeah, I, I did but I'm, I'm growing I'm growing up watching him race. Like, I want to do that. I want to do that. Dad, why can't we do that? He's like, dad's got no money. Yeah. I was like, okay. Well, when I turned 13, 14 years old, uh, my uncles were still racing at the time. And I kid you not, I was actually, I call it a housemaid. I, my mom cleaned houses. Uh, so I would go on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday morning during the summer and I help her clean houses for $20. That twenty dollars would buy my pit pass to go into the dirt track that week to go help my uncles. Well, that that developed into a, a really, really deep rooted passion. Uh, I worked with my uncle Wes for probably the next four or five years until I turned eighteen, and uh, then it was time to graduate from high school. And then it was like, holy cow, I got to decide what I'm going to do with my life. All I wanted to do is go dirt track racing. I never went to a homecoming or a prom because they were always on a weekends. I quit high school sports because they were played on weekends. I wanted to go go racing. Um, and then I had to get a job. And I wanted to go racing. So I packed up my bags and moved to North Carolina for a tech school. Uh, went down there. And here's, here's a funny story. I don't know if you know or not. Um, I started knocking on shop doors, going door to door to door at shops. I was going to be the best, best damn toilet bowl cleaner, shop floor sweeper you'd ever met in your life. And... Yep. I went into I went into base motorsports in 2000 January of 2003 and I ran into somebody in their gift shop and start talking to him he's like well do you have any you know athletic ability I was like ah, I I wrestled a little bit uh, in junior high and high school like but I was like that that's about it. he's like well there's a pit crew school that you might you know do all right at well you know the guy and so do I Larry Carter so Larry <laughs> Carter is the one nice. who sent me to five off five on where I started changing tires. That is a fantastic story. That Yeah, that's a fantastic story. I, I think to give a little background, I think hopefully a lot of people listening to this know who Larry Carter is. Really great individual, longtime cup crew chief, who now is, um, I guess, heavy fab shop foreman for us. He's been the fab shop foreman for for us for for a while now i mean i can think how many years six seven eight nine years but uh that is a fantastic story larry is quite an individual that's cool i i can't wait to uh i can't wait to talk to him about that i had no idea so i'm glad yeah, I'm, i ran into him one time at the break in the break room and kind of kind of eased eased into it and I, I don't think he fully grasped what i was saying but uh, he he is the reason why i got my break like that that's that, great. that meant the world to me. I mean, I wouldn't trade it. I wouldn't trade anything for the world. I love my kids, love my wife. Like I, I've got it going on when it comes to family. I love it. Um, the dog, we got to so, the dog in there. You got, you got the, oh, this, yeah. this cute picture of the dog. <laughs> so yeah, we uh, decided to get a, get a puppy just so we could put the, the cherry on the top of the family thing. Yeah, so, absolutely. So that, that's going great. Um, but then it was, you know, my wife, she knows how, how passionate I am about racing. Uh, and I'd say five years ago or so, it was like, okay, well, what, what can we do? You know, we, you can't travel the, the country and pit race cars and travel the country and race race cars. It's just, it's not physically possible to do that and be, you know, the, the father that we need right now. So we figured out a way to make it work locally. So I went and, you know, kind of stuck my uh, toes in the water a little bit, trying to figure out what was out there. And and came across the outlaw carts at, at Millbridge Speedway and uh, been doing that for four or five years now. And uh, I honestly, looking back on it, I probably should have become a pilot because I feel like I've spent more time in the air than I have on all four. But <laughs> that is fantastic. But but damn it, I'm racing and I'm having I'm having a great time. 
before we check out, I want you, uh, you just showed me, which I think it's, it's, it, it's fitting based on your racing experience <laughs> and the way you, the way you, you put it to me is it's paying homage to your homies back in Illinois, but That's show, right. show, show everybody the bar so, top, your custom bar top here before we check out. So, well. so when I, uh, when my wife and I built this house, we, uh, finished our basement and when we finished the basement, I, uh, of course, wanted to build my own bar. So when I did, I actually put together a uh, a finished bar top, and it's all the the old school photos from Springfield Speedway back in Springfield, Illinois, and a lot of the people that are basically, you know, my mentors on on how I got to where I was. You know, I'm I'm trying to, I didn't want this room to be about you know cup racing or where I'm at, or I just wanted to remember my roots. And every time I belly up to my home bar. You know, it kind of takes me back down memory lane. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of where it all started. So That's fantastic. That's super cool. Well, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, appreciate everybody joining us. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us, Nick. I had a lot of fun. Thanks for showing us your bar top. And, uh, yeah, I look forward to doing this again. I appreciate it, Alan. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.